ashver.com Hello and welcome to ashver.com. You are watching an interesting and informative video on vitamin C, the benefits, evolution, treatment, therapy, experiment. Please read the disclaimer carefully. What is vitamin C? Vitamin C, or ascorbic acid, has several different properties, antiviral antihistamine antitoxin antibiotic cofactor in many enzymatic reactions antidepressant antioxidant. Vitamin C also regulates blood sugar levels, and can, imp can improve depression symptoms. The catch to this is the dosage. The RDA for an adult is 60 mg. Well, 60 mg is enough to keep most people from getting scurvy, yet we still see scurvy in this country. Vitamin C Benefits The most well-known health benefit of vitamin C is its boost to the immune system. But, did you know it is an antioxidant and can also boost your mood? Indeed, if you take enough vitamin C per day, it will raise your norepinephrine levels producing an uplifting effect on your overall mood. Like vitamin E, it is a potent antioxidant that has many other, lesser known, benefits to our health. Let's learn a bit more about the vitamin before I tell you about my little experiment. A bit about vitamin C and evolution. The majority of animals can produce their own vitamin C. Humans, and a few other animals such as apes, guinea pigs and a few species of bird lost this ability at some point in our early evolution, but exactly why is unknown. The theory is that during periods of star during periods of starvation, not having to expend energy to make vitamin C internally was a great advantage. Most of these species were primarily vegetarian, and it is speculated that the amount of ascorbic acid they consumed through diet alone was approximately 2.5 grams to 9 grams per day. A. However, for the older population of a species, the inability to produce vitamin C may have led to a number of different illnesses including arthritis, heart disease, cancer and weakened immune systems. Once an organism is past its reproductive prime, it's not really an evolution threat if that organism suffers from arthritis. What matters is that a large number of healthy offspring was left behind. This isn't so true in our lives today. While, from an evolutionary perspective, it still doesn't matter if an older member of a species suffers from arthritis or other illness, to humanity it does. The inability to create our own ascorbate may have led to the high prevalence of chronic disease we see in our older population. In fact, the typical diet of a human in this day and age is lacking considerably in vegetables rich in the vitamin. Because of this of this. There is a chronic state of malnutrition including a vitamin C deficiency. For women of childbearing age, this is cause for concern. The majority of children are born already suffering deficiency, mainly because we have lost the scurvy. We all know why Brits were called limeys at one point. Scurvy was highly prevalent on British ships, and many sailors died as a result. However, it was found that citrus fruits, especially limes, prevented and cured scurvy, hence the term limeys. Scurvy is the result of a shortage of collagen which is caused by vitamin C deficiency. Ascorbate, vitamin C, is imperative to the production of collagen, the substance that essentially binds everything together, like muscles, ligaments, and other tissues. Symptoms include bruising, bleeding into the joints which causes swelling and pain, and loss of both hair and teeth. Susceptibility to stress and fatigue are two of the early symptoms of the disease. Sound for Vitamin C is a treatment. There were several pioneers involved in the study of ascorbic acid as a viable therapy for illness and chronic disease, most notably, Linus Pauling PhD, Erwin Stone PhD, and Frederick Klenner MD. Erwin Stone, Ph.D., Ph.D., found that vitamin C made a wonderful preservative for food as well as an antioxidant. 
He also saw the potential health benefits in it, and in the 1930s he began taking massive doses when it became available as a supplement. He found that the recommended dose of ascorbate was much less, about 100 times less to be exact, than humans need, and he based this on the amount of ascorbic acid other mammals manufactured endogenously, within deep tissue. Stone also theorized that SIDS, sudden infant death syndrome, was a direct result of vitamin C deficiency. Linus Pauling, PhD supported Dr. Stone's work and is probably the most infamous of the three men. He was a biochemist and, therefore, shunned by the medical community and made out to be a quack because he lacked a medical degree. He studied how animals use and synthesize ascorbate finding that typically a high amount of the vitamin was required to maintain health. Rather than assume humans required the same high amounts of ascorbic acid to maintain health, Pauling estimated the amount of the vitamin in 110 raw plants which supplied 2,500 calories. His estimate found that the amount contained in the raw plants was 35 times that of the recommended daily allowance. Megadose therapy With a dosage of 8,000 mg and higher, vitamin C is lethal to bacteria such as tuberculosis and streptococcus. At even higher levels, it is also selectively toxic to cancer cells. Dr. Frederick Klenner, MD was the first, f first physician to treat numerous diseases with massive amounts of vitamin C. Some of the diseases he treated successfully are Pneumonia Herpes, zoster and simplex Hepatitis Leukemia Hypercholesterolemia, high cholesterol Diabetes Glaucoma Schizophrenia Chronic fatigue Cancer Alcoholism Arthro He also cured chickenpox, herpes vricella zoster, measles, mumps, tetanus and polio in the 1940s which was before the vaccine had been discovered. For the next 40 years of his practice in family medicine, Dr. Klinak continued to use megadose vitamin C therapy to treat P to treat his patients. He once said, some physicians would stand by and see their patient die rather than use ascorbic acid, vitamin C, because in their finite minds it exists only as a vitamin. He also cured chicken pox, herpes vricella zoster, measles, mumps, tetanus and polio in the 1940s which was before the vaccine had been discovered. For the next 40 years of his practice in family medicine, Dr. Klina continued to use megadose vitamin C therapy to treat his patients. He once said, some physicians would stand by and see their patient die rather than use ascorbic acid, vitamin C, because in their finite minds it exists only. How to take vitamin C? Vitamin C has a very short half-life. This means the vitamin is excreted in a very short amount of time typically about every four to six hours. This means that frequent dosages need to be taken throughout the day to keep the levels in the blood high enough enough to reap the benefits. Usually, every four to six hours is sufficient. Finding the right dose of is easy, but that dosage varies by each individual. It also varies based on the amount of stress you are currently suffering. When we're stressed, we make adrenaline. The more adrenaline you produce, the more vitamin C you consume, and the more you need to intake. The trick is to reach what is called bowel tolerance or the point at which it causes diarrhea, you'll know it when it happens, don't worry. Once tolerance is reached, the dosage is dropped to a level that does not cause experiment. After all this research, I was insatiably curious if any of this was true. Like any good scientist, I decided to experiment on myself. I started taking vitamin C, and I took enough to reach bowel tolerance which was 8 grams, 8,000 mg, 8,000 mg, per day. I noticed an almost instantaneous improvement in my mood and the allergy I had to my cats was completely gone. Shortly after I started taking the vitamin, 
My husband came down with strep throat complete with the characteristic little white pustules. Before he went to the doctor I gave him 4000 mg of vitamin C. While my husband was at the doctor's office, I felt a little pain in my throat, looked in the mirror and found it was just slightly red. When the body is sick, the amount of vitamin C required rises dramatically, so either I doubled my usual dosage. I decided this would be the perfect time to really prove that vitamin C worked. When my husband got home, he decided he didn't want to take the antibiotic he was given, and I didn't blame him. Instead, we both took vitamin C. He took 1000 mg every 2 hours and I increased my dose to 1000 mg every 20 minutes until I hit bowel tolerance. After 8000 mg and 1 hour, the pain in my throat was gone along with the redness. Those little white pustules in my husband's throat were gone about 2 hours after he got home. The next day, all of our symptoms had vanished. Strep throat is caused from the streptococcus bacteria and is highly contagious. It also typically takes an antibiotic about 4 days to improve the symptoms, and you have to keep taking the drug for about 10 days total. Comparatively, vitamin C cured, literally, our strep throat in less than 24 hours with no side effects and prevented my daughter from eating. Thank you for watching this interesting and informative video. This channel offers motivational, inspirational, valuable and informative videos to soothe, cleanse and inspire your health, mind, body and spirit. You can find lot of interesting videos on wide range of topics here. Stay tuned and keep watching.